the Director for Health Promotion Bureau and the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau at the Department of Health. Growing up, um, we rented an apartment. We get uh, brought to school by my aunt um, who lives with us. We always would have baon, um, not in money but in food. And that's really because it's part of um, pagtitipid. I also will remember that we don't have birthday parties when we are younger, except when I guess we turned one year old. And my parents would just say that it's better to share what we have for others. That was really the first few lessons of, I say, charity or generosity during that time um, that I learned from them. That it's not just about us, but really about the people around us. I am very privileged to be part of this campaign, but also very grateful for this opportunity to promote the work that we do. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. I'm Chinkitan. I'm considered as the Pambansang Wealth Coach here in the Philippines. I was born and raised here in Tondo, Manila. So whenever I go out on the street, going to school, I would hear yung mga racial slur, like for example, uh, in Chik, Beho, Chekwa, Iba Singkit. And it has been always in my mind that I need to prove myself towards others. I really work so hard. I turn night into day, day into night. I sold everything that I can get my hands onto. And I really am so thankful and grateful because of those hardships. I turned my pain into my gain. I turned my scars into stars rather than becoming a victim of this situation. I'm proud to be Filipino Chinese and at the same time I'm proud to be part of this campaign. It will promote the culture of the Filipino and the Chinese. There are a lot of good things that we can learn from the Filipino and likewise there are a lot of good things that we can learn from the Chinese. Catch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart only on CNN Philippines. Hi, I'm Camille Ko, a content creator and entrepreneur. I am of Chinese heritage. I'm of Chinese ancestry, but I was born and raised in the Philippines. All my friends know this from school. Like, they really know my parents by name because they know that my parents are so strict. They're very involved in my life. And I definitely have really Chinoy values. I grew up speaking Chinese. At home, we weren't allowed to speak Filipino to our parents. We had to do really well with our Chinese studies because my parents really feel that it's important for us to, you know, have a connection to our roots and to really not forget where our ancestors came from. I'm so happy that there's a campaign like this where we can bridge differences and truly come together so that everyone can have an understanding of this whole movement. Catch me on Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, on CNN Philippines. I'm Kenneth Cabonpue, and I'm an industrial designer. I grew up into a sort of a pseudo-traditional Chinese family. My father was a traditional Chinese businessman, and my mother was working always from the house. She was a designer who built furniture literally from our backyard. Every night before going to bed, she would read stories of fairy tales and different stories from faraway lands. After I drifted off to sleep with these stories, the next morning would find me wanting to recreate these stories using the materials that I found. Since I grew up in the Philippines, everything that I know, my inspiration, uh, my whole history, my culture, um, everything that I do is inspired by the Philippines. I feel very honored and feel very proud to be part of a campaign to try to rediscover and find out what is it that makes a Chinoy. Watch me on Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, 
Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hi, I'm Joselle Do C. I'm the chairman and CEO of Eber Belena Cosmetics. I was raised here. Although my background is Chinese, I still believe that we are culturalized from a Chinese blood into a Filipino national. So I blended both together to best fit of what I am here in the Filipino community and work as a good Filipino citizen. I hope my detailed uh, sharing and wisdom will help uh, our next generation uh, to know what we're doing and where we're coming from and uh, looking forward to see the younger generation. I'm inviting everybody to watch Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hello, I'm Yvette Tan. I'm a writer. I write horror um, fiction. So I have a couple of books. When you grow up Chinoy, you don't know you're growing up Chinoy because you kind of live in a bubble. To be fair to my parents, my parents raised me very well, but I guess there, there was always the pressure to be a certain person that I wasn't, not just in the family, but also outside. Because of that, I got bullied. I didn't know how to deal with people. So I think this is what contributed to me escaping into books. I write a lot of fiction. The thing about fiction is it may not be real. It may, be, it may come from somebody else's imagination, but it's a bridge for the reader to think in a different way, to see things from a different point of view. And I think that holds power. I am so proud and so honored to be part of this campaign that promotes Filipino Chinese culture because it's about time that people learned about Chinois and our contributions to society. Watch me on Chinois TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hi, my name is Chris Tan. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm also a life coach and I also act and I dabble in cryptocurrency. So growing up as a Chinoy was a little bit challenging because I had very sinked eyes and uh, I would always be made fun of because my eyes were so small. So I had a little bit of an insecurity about that growing up. I also am very Moreno, so that was a weird mix and people found that very weird and made fun of that in my school. Well, the good thing about me was I'm never really one to allow anyone to talk down on me or make fun of me. I actually looked at it as a challenge to be accepted, not just by me, but by my peers, and to look beyond the physical. This is something that I think is important to be able to get out there so that people understand that Chinois are also Filipinos. And we are more Filipino than we are Chinese, actually, because this is where we grew up. Uh, although we bring our Chinese culture as a part of it, our hearts are still here in the Philippines. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. I'm Valerie Tan. I've been a TV and events host for 15 years already. I'm also a content creator. I do lifestyle and travel vlogs. And I'm also an entrepreneur. I'm very fortunate in the fact that my parents are very supportive with my career of choice. Because as a Filipino Chinese, the usual stereotype is you're expected to be a doctor, an accountant, an engineer, and of course, an entrepreneur. But for us, me and my siblings, we all had different career paths and my parents were very, very supportive of each of our choices. So they would bring me to all the auditions and up until I was starting already and struggling to get a project on TV, they were there for me. They were truly 100% supportive and gave me 100% unconditional love and support. I I'm very lucky in that aspect. It 
is an honor and truly am humbled to be part of this roster to share my story as a modern Chinoy and to find representation for their own stories and their own journeys. Catch me on Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart on CNN Philippines. My name is Stan C. I am a sportscaster and a voice talent. So when I was growing up, I was bullied because of my name. I was bullied because I was bookish. I was considered a nerdy kid. And in a way, pag na-color ka na into your little box, hindi na nila ma-i-imagine na you can step out of your box. When I was being bullied, it was really people making me feel bad about myself, making me feel that I shouldn't have any self-confidence, any self-esteem. So it wasn't necessarily about like what I wanted to be or who I am. It was more of who they thought I was. My goal was to reinvent myself. So that's why I wanted to do everything I wanted to do. What I've seen in my career is that a lot of the opportunities that opened up for me was because I put myself out there and I simply asked, even if the opportunity didn't exist. One of the things I really believe in is representation. It's something that I really stood for and wanted to push for. And I'm glad that this season we're expanding beyond coverage of Chinois inside Metro Manila. So it's great that we're hearing all these stories because it adds more diversity and more flavor into the overall picture of what being a Chinoy is. Hi, I'm Rain Smika. I'm a fashion model and I model professionally and internationally. I got into modeling uh, when I was 15. I actually didn't expect to get into modeling. I was rather scouted by a talent agent. And when I tried it out, it, I think no one actually knew what was modeling. <laughs> In the Chinoy committee, well, I would get comments like, what is she doing? It also made me question myself, what am I doing? <laughs> I was just having fun and learning from the mentors who discovered me in the talent agency. And eventually, I found a place for myself in this confusing world. I found that modeling actually made me found this group of people where I felt like I belonged to. It's really exciting because I get to share my story to um, everyone, to the Chinoy community, and it allows me to also learn more about myself and inspire others. And I hope a lot more of the Chinois would get into the type of field I did in modeling. Watch me as Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. I'm Father Ari D of the Society of Jesus. I'm president of Savior School, a Chinese Filipino Catholic Jesuit school. My family moved to the suburbs, which San Juan was at that time, in the early 1960s. I think for my grandfather, that was like a step up, moving from Chinatown to the suburbs. No, there was nothing in Little Baguio in San Juan at that time. You look at the old pictures and, and you realize that. No? So because of that move, then they were very far from Chinatown, from the Chinese schools where my own parents studied. So they wanted to preserve a Chinese language and culture. Thankfully, by that time, by the early 60s, both Saver School and Immaculate Conception Academy were already in San Juan. They also made the move to the suburbs. So that's where uh, I was sent, along with my brothers. We you know, grew up in a Catholic environment where faith was something that was part of life. You know, we went to Catholic school. So I, I grew up in that kind of environment. What makes me proud as a Chinoy is the different layers of our identity. We belong to different worlds, for most of them Chinese and Filipino. And that's something to celebrate and be proud of. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only in CNN Philippines.
Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Donya Maria Brown Rice, My Kind of Rice, from SL Agritech. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities. really grows up dreaming to be a public servant. Sa totoo lang, no? You're never actually told by your parents um, to work in government as a young child. But during that time, I saw how perhaps a mix of good mind, um, good heart, and good skills could actually bring about in government service. I'm Beverly Lorraine Chuaho. I'm the Director for Health Promotion Bureau and the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau at the Department of Health. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, uh, means that I contribute in whatever way I can um, to the improvement of the Filipino society, taking with me the values that I've learned or that I've been reared with growing up um, with a Chinese background. I grew up in a Filipino-Chinese household. Uh, my parents, actually it's my grandparents, were both migrants from China. So my dad is an insurance agent, while my mom is a practicing obstetrician and gynecologist. I would say that growing up, we rented an apartment. There were three of us, magkakapatid. Um, there's my ate, uh, my ati, older sister, and my shorty or younger brother. I also will remember that we don't have birthday parties when we were younger, except when I guess we turned one year old. And my parents would just say that it's better to share what we have for others. So your birthday parties would mean bringing some things to the orphanage or buying, at that time, wheelchairs no, to donate to certain um, organizations. And maybe that was really the first few lessons of, I say, charity or generosity during that time um, that I learned from them, that it's not just about us, but really about the people around us. And we knew that after that, we'd feel good. So we grew up with my mom um, really being busy with her work at the hospital and seeing her patients. So she'd be the one who will usually be out early in the morning to do rounds and come home really late at night because her clinic finishes late. So my dad was very active in um, the family association. Um, so in this case, the whole family association, grand family association, and um, several others. No? So pertaining to which part of China um, we came from. And I think in it's his participation in those um, family associations where we found more connection um, with other Chinois in the country. It is in these venues that I think systematically, I saw what um, civic participation means, particularly for how my dad would take part in, I don't know, whether it's 
charity events is what they would call it, organizing people who can donate bigas, food, etc. during times of calamities, but also during normal times, no, when they would um, send these to, say, churches, um, for the churches to distribute it. My mom has helped so many people, not just with relatives coming to our house on weekends when her clinic is closed, but also in school. We'll have classmates, parents come up to me and say, pasyente kami ng mami mo, or yung classmate mo, mami mo yung nagpaanak. Um, there's just perhaps so much um, family pride in the fact that mom was able to help so many people um, through her profession. It was clear to me when I was younger that, oh, I wanted to also be able to do that for other people. I passed UP, so I asked my parents whether I can go to UP. And at that time, obviously, one of the concerns was, are you going to be too Chinese when you go into that environment? But for my mom, she also raised that, well, if you're going to go to medicine, um, it will be a really good opportunity if you go to UP for your pre-med. So I went to UP Deliman. Immediately, there was a Chinese Student Association, CSA, that was there. A huge part of my non-academic time actually was spent with CSA. That was an opportunity to really grow, no? or maybe know more about and embracing your being Chinoy. You had this group who had this commonality. So I guess overall, it made the supposed transition very, very smooth, actually. There was external pressure, but I'd have to give it to my parents. The pressure wasn't really coming from them. No? So it was really more my relatives and family friends who were kind of expecting, oh, your mom will be retiring um, eventually, and then maybe you'll have to take over. Pero never ko siyang narinig no? from my parents to say, ito na yun. So in UP, for example, I would remember as an intern, we'll have to prepare for our academic requirements and start seeing patients maybe at 9 or 10 in the morning. But the patients have actually lined up at 4. Ilang oras na sila nakapila. Um, they'd come in with really large tumors already, sometimes bigger than their own appendages. And it really happens because they didn't have primary care. They didn't have someone to look at them and take care of them very early on when they were still in, say, in the rural areas. So it's those instances that you realize that, hey, this is a hospital of multi-talented people. And yet, we actually don't have the solution because the solution is bigger than a single hospital. The solution is beyond clinical care. The solution is outside the walls of the best tertiary government hospital in the country. So in UP, we go into first year of medical school and immediately you're already told no, there's an art to medicine, meaning it's not just about the scientific part of it, but perhaps the political part of medicine as well. This notion was nurtured because we would have community medicine rotations. No? It means you don't necessarily have to be in the far-flung areas in the country for your practice to be relevant. So even specialists can actually be community-oriented. But maybe the most important or uh, memorable experience that I would have is attending the Global Health Course in UP. interestingly was formed by two students. No? They were at their fifth year in UP uh, medicine when they started this and the goal was really to get younger medical students see what is life outside of um, being a clinician. Siyempre, no, on a day-to-day -day basis, our interactions are with our professors who are mostly in the clinical field. But you never really hear about what happens for the other um, physicians. No? So I think more than just seeing, oh, these are the possible career paths, 
In one of those reflection sessions, I remember when we talked about why do you help people? No? It circles back to my experience as a young person. When they ask, I think, in, in one session, like, how do you define helping out or charity? And immediately, my own example was really bringing stuff to orphanages, going for medical mission. They challenged that definition and said, is it really what charity only means? Is it really what generosity pertains to? Is it your option or is it a responsibility? But it was in UP that I realized what my contribution for the society would be. And that biggest realization came from working with colleagues or other students who had a passion for public health. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center Evergreen Cereal AgriPro Premier Nutrition Inc. Global Diesel and GU Engineering Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner Japan Parts Trading Center Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities For your copying and printing needs, it must be sharp Philippine Si Pyok Song Lin Musical Federation Association Vespo Pipes and Lutonic Air Purifiers by Tech Global Incorporated Aruga Apartments by Rockwell Chua Beng Tang Alejandro Ko Jimmy C Nang Family Enrique Chua Li Poi Chin Albert Ko Stephen Sia Rosalina Yasai Anson Tan Sherwin Choi Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart What UP showed us was that people aren't sick because they needed one consult People are sick and continue to be sick because some part of the system is broken. And it means that um, even if you treat them through a, through a medical mission, you always bring them back to the situation that will get them there. When I graduated, they knew. But I know that they secretly wish that I just go direct into residency program and be a clinician. A different passion was already brewing. So after graduating, I actually asked for just a year. A year to do what I want first and reassess whether I'll go still into clinical work. I talked to my mentors um, in UP. So while in medical school, you're actually assigned sort of like um, a set of parents. No? So for mine, it was um, doctors and Dr. Mantari. So I told them about wanting to go into non-clinical space. Um, but that time, I wasn't sure. Do I want to teach? Do I want to be a manager in public health? Or do I want to be um, an NGO worker? We actually went around the country reteaching midwives, obstetricians about unang yakap or non-separation of the baby from the mother. No? During those 12 months that I asked from my parents, it was cemented that I probably sh will not want to become a clinician, meaning I will also not become an OBGYN, but more like explore my talents in public health management. But then, of course, I finally got the prodding from everyone to go into 
residency ulit and say, oh, maybe just become a clinician and if you really want to help, dedicate X number of days of clinics for poor people. But I was sure that that wasn't the way to go. As Director for Health Promotion Bureau, my main job is to make sure that we put out policies and programs that make it easier for people to be healthy and stay healthy. So what does that mean? Um, it means that we need to make sure the environment and um, the policies are going to be supportive of people to choose healthy. Part of my work now in Health Promotion Bureau is to increase health literacy, but at the same time, enable conditions diba? for people to choose to be healthy. Pag alam na ng tao kung ano kailangan gawin, gagawin nila yun. So that was the older paradigm of health promotion. No? So I'll teach all of you about the bad effects of smoking, and I will expect that all of you will not smoke. But we know that doesn't really happen, right? Even among doctors, we studied how bad smoking is, but some doctors still do smoke. No? And that's really because if your environment enables it, if it's still cheap to buy a cigarette, if there are no restrictions in public places to smoke, etc., you are enabled. No? So this is the paradigm that we wanted to change. Meaning, if you want people to practice becoming healthy, make it so easy for them. Kaya naman, gusto natin patuloy no, na marami tayong mga complementary na initiatives for this. Kasi taon-taon, um, 110,000 no, um, Filipinos die from tobacco-related illness and that's essentially 300 na mamatay araw-araw because of tobacco-related disease. Um, in terms of Filipinos' health-seeking behavior, we do know that a huge part of it is also as a result of, again, the enabling environment. First, um, is we don't have a good primary care system set up in place, meaning not everyone gets access to primary care or a physician or their group of healthcare workers who get take care of them for simple conditions no, or giving them preventive services. The other part of it is, of course, the cost is prohibitive. And that's why our work in universal healthcare um, is really prioritizing being able to uh, make sure that every Filipino family is linked to a primary care provider and their basic primary care services are given for free. UHC law also outlines the shift in how we're running the healthcare system. And the two main shifts that I can um, very simply talk about is the shift in the way we see preventive care you know, or health promotion and prevention being done. So as I've mentioned a while ago, in the past, we prioritize curative services and curative services provided by physicians or by specialists. No? Under this law, it clearly talks about how to set up our primary care um, system, no? like the one you're seeing in many parts of Europe, Australia, and UK. Um, it's really not their hospitals no, that they're proud of, but really that level of primary care when if you miss your vaccination, your primary care provider calls you because they know you, right? They know you and they know your kids. No? So it's that level of the system that we want to build up. No? So shifting from a largely curative hospital-centric care into a, a strong primary care system. And the other aspect is recognizing that if you want people to be healthy, no matter how much uh, clinics or hospitals you build, it doesn't add up because studies repeatedly show that 80% of healthcare of, or health no, of, of all of us is not made in clinics or hospitals. Yung 80% of our health is related to our education, to our address, no, where you live, kung delikado ba dun sa lugar. It's related to your ability to buy food. It's related to your healthy behavior. It's related to the air you breathe. No? And this means that for this 80%, the interventions are not in our clinics or in our hospitals. The interventions are working with other sectors 
housing, the environment, etc. No? There has to be more expertise amongst the health sector to work with uh, the other sectors. start realizing that um, the world is getting smaller and smaller and when the health of a particular set of the population is not good, it doesn't translate well for the rest of the society. So our job is as citizens of this world, not just of the Philippines, is to make sure you know, that the gaps or the inequity, the differences in how we live versus others actually get smaller and smaller. And so to be able to do that, you are all encouraged no, to go into the public sector, not just public health, no, or contribute to the public sector, perhaps through NGOs, etc. People are asking what Cardinal Santos Medical Center Hospital on Wheels is all about. It's about us bringing the hospital to your community. This pandemic has made people really apprehensive about going to the hospital. What better way to serve our patients than bringing to them our services right at their doorstep. The services that we have in our hospital on wheels are the usual blood test. We have a doctor on board who can do physical examination on our patients. We have chest x-ray and we have also ultrasound and a 2D echo on board. We can go anywhere. So long as there's a space for us to park our big truck, we will go to you. You just get in touch with us. We have our website that you can uh, go to or you may call this number 8724-4115. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center Everbilena PG Flex Linoleum and Maruyama Tarpaulin Evergreen Cereal AgriPro Premier Nutrition Inc. Global Diesel and GU Engineering Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner Japan Parts Trading Center Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities Philflex Wires and Cables Chua Beng Tang, Alejandro Ko, Jimmy C, Nung Family, Albert Ko, Stephen Sia, Rosalina Yasai, Li Hong Ming. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Charity um, can be defined in many ways. I do think that when we have more, that's also the time that we should be giving more. Giving shouldn't just be limited um, into perhaps seeing boxes or seeing um, gifts, no? but shaping our efforts, no? continuous efforts to 
shape how the future will look like, such that it will come, it will become better than how we have received it now. I think it's very important for anyone, Chinoy or not, to give back to the community. Because I guess especially for Chinois, you want to give back to the place that nurtured you and gave you a good life. Chinois really value community service. I think it exposed many of us to the situation of our country as to what the, the situations in provinces. And I think it developed an awareness that we Chinois also have brought today. And that's why most Chinois are very centered on community service. Giving charity is very important. It creates a big flow of energy around the the community. You know, the goodness is always an important part of prosperity. You, know, you have to be good to everyone around you. It is a big flow of karma, of doing good, giving good, receiving good. So that's one of the key factors of success. Modern Chinoy is a global citizen who uses the best of uh, both cultures to be able to contribute for the betterment of the society. First would be hard work. There's no substitute to persistence and working really, really hard, um, especially if you want to achieve certain things. Second is respect for elders. Oftentimes, people challenge this notion of respect for elders or parents by saying that um, we should be able to counter based on you know certain principles, etc., or parang just not being sunud sunud no, to elderly. But I do think that this can be and should be continued, of course, with utmost you know balance, debates, uh, with utmost critical thinking. But um, we owe a lot of where we are to our parents, our grandparents, and, and their context is perhaps always um, different than what we grew up in. The last value would then probably be community. Um, over the course of the years, we have seen that as the Chinoy families have modernized, um, our ability to link to the more organic communities or family associations that have been built throughout the years have been relegated. No? So, kahit ako din, no, mismo, my participation is not actually as strong as, you know, back at the time, um, during my dad's time. But with how the society is evolving now, uh, mga social media, uh, perhaps we have to bring back these more organic and authentic um, relationships um, within the community because they will perhaps be a strong stepping stone for us to, to rebuild and maybe do bigger things um, together outside of our formal networks. But ito yung way to organically uh, work with um, other people who will have the same value system. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders was brought to you by Donya Maria Brown Rice, My Kind of Rice, from SL Agritech. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities.